Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, today, fellas, I was asked to check out a particular ship during last night's live stream. And, well, I got stuck playing it for quite some time. And, well, that has led me to believe that this ship is simply one of the most abysmal, miserable, downright unpleasant ships to play in this game, but also one of the most rewarding and satisfying when you can get her to work. And that is none other than the Tier 10 Techline Italian Destroyer, the Rogolo. So the Rogolo is the jewel of the Italian Destroyer line. And the Italian Destroyer line is pretty unique when it comes to most other destroyers in game and that it's a full line of destroyers that get sap shells sap shells have high penetration capabilities and very high alpha damage in comparison to other shells of other calibers at their tier which means that they are ideal for dealing with other destroyers and that is generally how the line is played up and down the mid-tier italian destroyers are some of the best destroyers in the game in my humble opinion they are fantastic for going in there and murdering the other destroyers that you come across which means you well win the fight for that cap get that cap and you tend to of course well win more when you take out the enemy team's destroyers now what's really odd about the italian destroyer line is that Unlike just about every single other line in the game, when you go up in tier, uh, the enjoyment and the uh, quality, I guess you could say, of the destroyers tends to go down. Not, re not really the quality, but they don't get easier to play because typically, again, as you work your way through a tier, you unlock more powerful ships with you know better capabilities. Um, and while, yeah, the higher tier destroyers do have better, you know, HP and damage stats than the lower tier destroyers, the problem is that what the mid tier destroyers make up for in pure sap alpha damage, while other ships, you know, at that tier, other destroyers have long reload times with normal HP and AP shells, the other destroyers tend to catch up in terms of pure DPM the higher you go in tier. So by the time you get it up to like tier 9 and tier 10, the Regalo is, well, it's not really that much of a standout destroyer anymore when it comes to its damage output because the other destroyers of the other nations have kind of caught up to it with their DPM. So you kind of lose your main trick there, although it still is more than capable of doing a decent amount of damage, more than a decent amount of damage, per salvo the problem is when you get to the tier 10 you have a very large destroyer like physically this is a big destroyer right it's the paulo emilio which again it's a big destroyer the class was designed as destroyer leader so it's a physically big target which means that well you're catching a lot more shells and there's no um heal on the ship which is very odd given its playstyle, and its concealment is quite terrible with both the commander skill and the module your maximum concealment is 7.2 kilometers which is well you know i'm pretty sure there's some cruisers at tier 10 that have a pretty similar concealment range so yeah that's that's great or they're definitely within a kilometer or two of it so your concealment's terrible your gun range is just bad, 11.6 kilometers base, without the module. Uh, that's terrible. And your reload time is not very good either, depending upon, you know, where uh, what you do with your build. You're sitting around four-ish seconds. So, that's all not very great, right? However, there are redeeming factors about the Regalo. You get the exhaust smoke, so you can pop your smoke and run at full tilt and be fine. You'll still be in your smoke screen. You get a nice engine boost that's relatively short-lived, but it is an engine boost nonetheless. And your torpedoes, well, they're more of a mixed bag. They are incredibly slow at 56 knots. They do a mediocre 13,000 damage and change. However, their detection range is one kilometer. So if they don't get spotted on their way to the target, 
and your target doesn't touch their rudder, they're not going to really have time to maneuver once they do spot the torpedoes. Even though they are only 56 knots, again, one kilometer warning isn't very much of a warning whatsoever. But again, they're only doing 13,000. I think 900 is the alpha. So not a whole lot of damage done there per torpedo. So, needless to say, in today's World of Warships, a destroyer that has a 7.2 kilometer det detection range is heavily reliant on its smoke screen and has a short gun range. It's, uh, it's not doing so hot at higher tier. Why? Well, there's a whole lot of hydro nowadays at higher tier. A whole, whole lot of radar. A whole lot of hybrid ships and planes in the air that can, of course, ruin your day with your massive detection range. And, of course, we've gotten crazier and crazier ships at higher tier. And, of course, you know, destroyers, we have some real gunboats at tier 10 now. You know, Smolin, Druid, um, Harugamo, so forth and so on, right? That can really give this ship a run for its... Hell, even Kitakaze can, can murder this thing down. However, when you can get it to work... It, it is a ship that is pretty damn satisfying to play, I gotta say. So, like, the match watching the background, I was able to... Well, a couple of things went right for me. One, I had some island cover, cover I could play with when, you know, I couldn't use my exhaust smoke. And in many cases, typically what I was trying to do with the uh, Regalo was, of course, you know, get into, into those destroyers 1v1s. In a, in a 1v1, this ship has a lot going for it. Per salvo, you're doing, if you get most of your shells to hit, in the neighborhood of like 5 to 6k damage per salvo. That's a lot of alpha to have against another destroyer. I mean, that, if you can get like 5 good salvos on the enemy ship, they're dead. Like, you will murder most destroyers in about 5 salvos if you get most of your shells to hit, which is excellent, right? But it's, of course, getting into those situations where you're actually, you know, coming across the destroyer and doing, you know, an actual 1v1. And the situation with the Regalo is that outside of, you know, that range, that 11.6 kilometer range that you have on your Regalo, which is, you know, roughly that of a cap circle, right? Uh, it's really difficult to get much out of the ship. Now, of course, you have the torpedoes, but they only go 56 knots. It's very slow. So when you're trying to torpedo other ships, keep in mind, too, you have a 7.2 kilometer detection range, right? And ideally, with torpedoes, you don't want the enemy to know that you have them on the way. Well, if you're trying to not use your smokescreen, because most players, when they see a smokescreen pop up, they're going to put two and two together and realize that there is a DD in the vicinity... You know, they'll start, you know, looking out for your torpedoes or maneuvering, right? And again, when you're working with 56-knot torpedoes, unless you're, you know, rushing someone Paulo Emilio style, which you can't really do because the torp alpha is so low in the Regalo, right? They're probably going to maneuver and then the torps will miss. But when things go right and you have team support and you can get into those 1v1s with other destroyers, you will absolutely dominate them, right? But, of course, it takes a lot of skill to force those situations to happen. Skill and luck. A lot of it really is luck, right? But when it all goes well, it's it's a very satisfying feeling, you know, when you get to murder other destroyers and, you know, just a handful of salvos. It's a great feeling. Um, or when you can, like what I do for a good chunk of this match, get some island cover and really let these guns go to work. It's a great feeling, you know, landing the shots, bringing in the damage, so forth and so on. Of course, there's arms race too, which certainly helps getting the reload buffs for the Regalo. Now, another thing about the Regalo too is that you can fit Luigi Sansteady on him. And once you get a single kill with him, you do get a nice buff to your range. It gets out to around 12.4 kilometers. Uh, with the build that I'm running, which is, of course, with the reload mod. Of course, you can take the range mod and get the range out a little bit further to be a bit more comfortable. That is very true. But again, when I'm playing the Regalo, in most cases, I'm trying to murder other DDs. So the Regalo also, like the Italian line, I've said this before about them, you typically don't wind up with a ton of damage at the end of the match. But that's okay because you're going after destroyers. And destroyers, while they may not give you a big number at the end of the match, it's a very impactful gameplay style. Because, again, taking out the enemy team's destroyers, getting rid of their eyes, getting rid of their torpedo spam, getting rid of their torpedo uh, screens, that is such a huge advantage that you're giving your team by doing that, that it's better for your team to, you know, murder a destroyer or two and only get, like, 60,000 damage but guess what? Again, you've, you've removed those ships from the enemy team, 
that gives your team such a huge advantage. And, they, and the game does reward you. Um, keeping that in mind, by the well, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is the the game does. You know, that's how the reward system is set up because you get rewarded versus the damage you do to the ship's overall HP, not the big damage number at the end of the match. That has a little bit to do with how much you get rewarded, but if you, you know, completely murder a DD from full health to not, that's the same as farming down a battleship from full health to not. So the game does take that into consideration. So if you're chasing after just the big damage numbers, this isn't the ship for you. But if you want to make an impactful, um, performance or you know make an impact on the enemy team's performance i guess my brain just isn't working right now fellas i do apologize for that the regalo is the ship for you but it is a ship that you do need to know what you're doing in in order to get the most out of it you need to know how dds work you need to know the other dds parameters and such you really need to know a lot about destroyers to get the regalo to work and of course again like i said with all the radar hydro super ships carriers submarines that are at higher tier it is a very frustrating experience at times. So while it's an absolute, you know, pain to play at times, when it works, it's such a nice ship. So that's probably why we don't see too much of it at all. When I was playing this ship on stream, I only saw one ship, one other Regalo. Other than that, I haven't seen a single one. I haven't seen a Regalo in a very long time, even outside of, you know, just this video. But it's probably because of the high skill for that's associated with it, or that's, I, I should say, is required to play it. So that's my two cents on the Regalo. Taking a look back at her in 2024, it's been a couple of years since she has been released. They did give her a little bit of love. You know, she got that range buff and that reload buff a little while ago. Definitely ma has made her more comfortable to play in today's World of Warships, but again, a ship that you still need to know what you're doing if you, you know, want to take her out. So guys, let me know what you guys think about the Regalo in the comments down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday, wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.